If you want to grow your design business, scale your revenue, gain more exposure, you need to think as a business owner first. And part of that is knowing your numbers, knowing how your business actually performs. If you don't do that, then it doesn't matter if you're an incredibly talented designer who mastered all possible design skills and creates amazing brands and websites because design skills alone are not enough. In today's video, we're gonna look at what are the most important metrics to check in your business, why they matter, and I'll show you a very simple way for you to start tracking your numbers so you can adapt your strategy and make smarter moves in your freelance business. And to make this even easier for you, I have a free tracking template in Notion that you can download and start tracking your numbers right away. And we're gonna use two practical examples for you to follow along. So let's cover the stories of our two typical freelancers and see what do they actually need to measure in their business to reach their goals. First, we have Sarah. She's a brand designer who loves posting on Instagram and Pinterest, and actually that's how most of her clients find her. But between brainstorming, creating content, publishing her work, reviewing client applications, jumping on sales calls, she never really knows if she's progressing anywhere in her business and when the next client will actually come through. And on the flip side, we have Eric, who's a brand designer and strategist who seems to have his content marketing nailed down, but despite a larger audience, he's not really getting the conversation he's hoping for and he's not really sure what's broken in his process and that's why it's so important to consistently review your progress and stay on top of your metrics so you can gain an understanding of your marketing performance of your business growth and highlight any risks or new opportunities for your business but how do you know which numbers to track how do you know what to actually track in your business? There are so many options. Well, that will really depend on your personal goals, on your client journey, and also the channels that you use in your own business. But to simplify it, we're gonna break it down into two main categories, marketing and sale. And under marketing, we're first gonna think about what are all the different channels that Sarah and Eric actually use to market their business. So let's jump into Notion. So for Sarah, she spends most of her time on Instagram. That's her primary marketing channel. So she will want to track her followers as well as her reach. She's also very consistent with her blog. So she wants to track her blog visitors to understand how many people actually consume her content there. She also uses Pinterest a lot to market her web designs. And out of all the different metrics that she can track on that platform, she decides to track link clicks because that's directly linked to her sales because it drives people to her website. Eric has a little bit of a different approach. So he's more into video marketing. So he's going to want to track his TikTok views and also his TikTok followers. But then he repurposes his TikTok content on Reels on Instagram. So he'll want to also track his Instagram reach as well as his Instagram followers. But his favorite way to grow his exposure is for interviews. So he loves doing guest workshops, doing podcast interview. So he'll want to actually track how many of those interviews of those uh, podcast interviews or workshop does he have every single month. And finally, he also has his own podcast. And that means that he'll also want to track his podcast listens. Then when it comes to the sales process, the sales metrics, you're going to want to think about your sales process and what are all the different steps that your prospects needs to actually take in order to go from prospect to client. So this is also going to look a little bit different for each of our designers. Sarah's process, for example, is to drive as many people as possible to her website and get them to fill out an inquiry form. And then after she reviews that inquiry form, if they're a good fit, she will send them a link to book a call with her. Afterwards, she'll send them a proposal, send them a contract to sign, and finally a deposit to start the work. So here she may want to track how many website visits she has, and she's particularly interested in how many people actually visit her services and her contact page, because that's where her inquiry form actually is. She's also interested in actually tracking how many inquiry inquiries does she get, because obviously not every single person that lands on her website will submit an inquiry. How many sales calls does she have? How many proposals does she send? And finally, how many clients does she convert? For Eric, the process is going to look a little bit different because his process is not to 
send is not to get an inquiry from clients is to actually get them to book a 15 minute free discovery call with him to talk about their business needs, how they could help each other, how he could work with them. And he also ends up pitching the client directly on a call and doesn't actually send an elaborate proposal afterwards. So Eric would pay close attention to how many clicks does he get to his online calendar. And in fact, he uses Bitly to actually track where do people come from? So he has a link on his website, on his TikTok, on his Instagram, his podcast. And he also has a special link for all of his interview appearances so that he know which of the channels actually is bringing most leads. But in addition to that, he, in addition to tracking the links, he also wants to see how many people actually book because similarly, not everyone who's going to land on his uh, calendar is going to book a call. So he wants to see how many people actually get cold feet or, you know, maybe his availability doesn't align with theirs. And he wants to understand how many people does he lose in between. After that, he'll track how many people actually does he convert directly on the call and how many get converted in his follow-up sequence to evaluate how do most of, at what stage most of his clients actually make a decision. So now that we know what are the most important metrics for Sarah and Eric, we want to set goals for them because if you don't set a goal or something to work towards, then you can't really put together an actionable plan and evaluate your efforts to see whether you're progressing in the right direction. So at this point, you want to look at all of your metrics and where you are right now and write down where do you want to be in a month. So going back to Sarah and Eric, Sarah currently has 5,000 followers on Instagram, but her goal is actually to reach 6,000. She also, well, 6,000 followers, but her reach, she wants to grow it to 20,000. Currently, she's about 15. She also gets currently about 3,000 visitors to her blog, but her goal is to push that to 5,000. Now, her Pinterest clicks are currently at 1.3, but in order to grow her blog visits, she also needs to increase her Pinterest link clicks. So she wants to raise that to 3K. Her goal also is to get 1,000 people to get to her services page, 500 people to get to her contact page. Out of that, get 20 people to submit an inquiry form, 10 sales calls, eight proposals, and book four clients per month. So these are Sarah's goals. For Eric, so he has a bit of a lot bigger audience and he wants to reach 300,000 views on TikTok, 30,000 followers. Because he also repurposes his content on Instagram, on Instagram, he wants 40,000 reach, 15,000 followers. He wants at least 10 uh, interviews per month, 5,000 podcast listens, and he wants 100 clicks from TikTok because that's his biggest audience, 50 from Instagram, 20 from podcasts, and 50 from his interview appearances, his guest appearances. Out of all of that, he wants to get 15 calls per month and convert four directly on the call and four via his follow-up sequence. Now, if you've never set goals like this before for each of your clients, you know, each of the steps in your client journey, then chances are you're not going to know what is a typical good goal to have. The numbers are just going to be assumptions. And because you don't currently have an understanding of your growth, the rate of your growth on a weekly or monthly basis, you may find that you're not really reaching your goals, that you're super far off. And that's okay. Because after a couple of weeks, after you consistently track your metrics, you will start understanding your growth rate better and you'll be able to adjust not only your strategy, but also potentially your goals as well. But to do that, we need to start tracking. So step number three is to track and analyze. So I personally like to track my numbers every single week. First thing on Monday, this is, usually takes me about 15 minutes. So it's not something that you need to dedicate a whole day to or hours to. It's just 15 minutes. And, you know, it's something that you can do while sipping your first cup of the day or something like this. And I find that it's just a nice way to 
start your day, start your week, you know, by having a clear overview of your business performance. And another reason why I like tracking weekly is because the online space moves so quickly. And by tracking weekly, I can see patterns and test hypotheses much quicker as well. So if I create a piece of content that takes off and, you know, it drives lots of visitors to my website, I don't want to wait until the end of the month to actually find that out. Ideally, I want to catch that as soon as possible, analyze why this content piece performed so well, why it worked so well, and try to recreate a similar piece of content and see whether I'm going to get the same results. So we'll test the idea out, see if my hypothesis is actually correct. And if yes, I'll just keep replicating that and creating more similar content. On the other thing, one thing to consider is when you track weekly, your growth may not be as apparent. And just because you haven't reached 25% of your monthly go after week one, doesn't mean that you need to completely flip your strategy and do things differently. You do want to give it a bit of time. You do want to take the time to analyze your numbers and see if there are any patterns at the end of the month. And at the end of the month, if you're not seeing the type of results you expected, the type of growth you expected, then you can try something different. So let's go back to Sarah and Eric and look at their numbers at the end of the month and try to make some assumptions about their results and what they should be paying attention to. So looking at Sarah's table, we can see a bit of a spike in her numbers around mid month. And this is a really good indicator for her to go back and analyze her channels to see what did she do the week before to actually attract more eyeballs on her content. We can also see that she reached her growth goal when it comes to her followers. Uh, so she did get some extra exposure, but she's really struggling with her conversions and she's really struggling to actually get people to submit an inquiry form and book a call with her. So perhaps she needs to reevaluate her communication and see if she's actually directing people to her contact form or is she just expecting people to find it by themselves on her website? Because once she actually gets on a call with, with them, her conversions are pretty good. So what she needs is actually to speak to more people. And that means potentially creating more promotional content with a very clear CTA. Now for Eric, Eric also had a little bit of a spike here. We can see that her TikTok views really boomed, which means that perhaps one of his content pieces went viral. But what's more interesting is that he gets a ton of clicks to his online calendar through his guest interview. So after hearing his talk or, or a podcast interview or a workshop, people are actually interested in learning more about him and end up clicking on his interview link. So that's already one hypothesis that he can test out, whether increasing the number of interviews and guest workshops that he has every month, will that increase also the number of clicks? However, his bookings remain on the lower side, even though lots of people are actually getting to his calendar. And here he needs to ask himself, is it because people are not ready to speak to him? Because since they're cold leads, perhaps they feel shy or intimidated to jump on a call, or maybe they click the link hoping to actually learn more about Eric, but instead it takes them directly to the calendar and feels like a very quick sell. So perhaps creating a landing page instead to drive people to that and provide more information about him and then embed a calendar on that page might be a better option. So that's another hypothesis that he should test out. And honestly, that's what business is really about. It's about testing different approaches, analyzing them, refining your process until you find what works for you. But without having a clear overview of your progress, you can't do any of that. Of course, there are many different ways to track your numbers in, in your business. You know, you, there are a lot of tools. There are a lot of templates online. If you're a data geek like I am, maybe you can take this template a step further and create uh, an expanded version of this table with conversion rates and graphs and charts. 
but this is already an amazing way to start taking control of your numbers and keeping an eye on them. So if you're not currently tracking your numbers, taking some time every week to review your marketing and sales efforts to understand whether you're on track to actually reach your revenue goals, then I really recommend to follow the steps in this video, then download this free template uh, that we got for you and just take 15 minutes per week to actually look into your metrics so you can make smarter business decisions moving forward. So I hope that you enjoyed this super actionable video and you're getting excited to get to know your numbers better so you can be not only the talented designer that you already are, but also an experienced business owner. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you next time, friend. Bye.